You have said that what occurred at Andersonville was beyond your powers to avert. Yes, sir. While performing your duties at Andersonville, you inspected the stockade. I imagine from the walls where the sentry stood, you looked down into it. How would you describe it, may I ask, sir? It has been described. The sword of hell? Indescribable, sir, indescribable. I suppose you remember, Colonel, hearing me say I could not bear the sight of those, those young boy prisoners in there, some 60 to 70 of them. And I sent them out to, to pick strawberries. And that's your favor, isn't it? Thank you. It is interesting. Oh, you keep referring to that act, as if you dare not remember anything else. Oh, you twist things, sir, and let Father Valen bring bread. You said that saving those men was of equal importance as keeping them alive. Yes, sir. The food was wormy and rotten. Did you think about sending out foragers to command your supply from Georgia's farmers? Oh, that would have been illegal. You could have signed vultures. That was not authorized. They would have gone for the sea. Not authorized, sir. You could have sent out the prisoners to collect firewood. Uh, they would escape. Under guard? There were not enough guards. They lied to stock it. The size was prescribed. Like those prisoners, among whom were carpenters, masons, and mechanics, they could have been shed just to, They could have kept them alive. I don't know how many. Those measures would have saved lives. Don't know how many! Did we say one? Mr. So Worse? It's one human life precious enough, Mr. So Worse? Did you not fall? It would have been illegal for me to do the things you say. Would you morally right? Are you a religious man? As I have testified, I know how important religion is, and I allowed ministers of all religions and all faiths to come into Andersonville. The professing religion as you do, you would agree that moral considerations, the prompting of human conscience, are primary to all men. Of course I do. I, I observe that, that <coughs> idea like most men. When I can. When you can? So you couldn't observe the, your moral obligations at Andersonville? That situation was General Vinder's responsibility, not mine. You consider that as General Vinder's responsibility because he was a military superior? Yes, sir. And how far do you deem his authority over yours? To all circumstances, given that was a military war situation. To all circumstances? Are you certain of that? I am absolutely certain. And in that military situation, <clears throat> had he given you direct orders to slaughter one of your own children? Would you have done that? That is ridiculous! Would you have done that? That's ridiculous! I don't know! Would you have done that? No! Why not? It would be an insane order! Yes. Yes, insane or immoral or inhuman. And therefore a man makes a inner judgment over the order he obeys. That implies that such order deeply offends humanity though disobeys. General Winder's authority over you was not absolute. So why did you obey? Am I required to answer? I did not think of my assignment at Andersonville in that way. I do not understand what happens here. I thought only to obey him in the normal way since he was my military superior. But not your moral superior. Not your moral superior. Every man owns his own soul. Therefore, every man is equal. The general, the private, the hot carrier. Every man alive knows that. You knew that. But that the situation that. at Andersonville had become grossly immoral. And General Winder was not your moral superior. You did not have to obey him. Why did you obey? I will say it clearly. I would have been most certainly court-martialed. And if my superiors wished, considering it was a time of war, and that war had come to a desperate, bitter stage in which the third traitor could have been sounded in a moment, I might have been executed. At least for a reason! You could have saved 14,000 lives. Were you afraid? I am soldier afraid. 
<laughs> so the question is, why did you obey? So I have explained what heroic thing do you demand I should have done at Andersonville? I, an ordinary man like most men. Mr. Was. we who are born into the human race are elected with in, into the entire responsibility into the scheme of things. We are endowed with reason and therefore responsible for our acts. A man may give his officials many things, but not his conscience, not his own conscience. So the core question is, why did you obey? Why? As I have said, as I say for the last time, it was to me a military situation. It was not a military situation. Whatever General Binder said, those people were helpless, unarmed men, sir. Those people were unharmless men. It wasn't a question of not a sort of question of war. It was a question of human beings. Shackman saw that. Just southern woman who brought food for the starving men saw that. Where was he cautious then? Where? In General Wilder's pocket, his money and his keys and no more worse than that? Oh, you speak highly, sir. Hi. Ask them in this room if they can say in their hearts they would have done different than I had had they been in my place. Ask them. You are all the victors here. You make up a morality for the losers. Yes. Yes, the victors shall make up the morality because losers cannot. And I spit on that morality. I spit on it. And I say, ask them in this room if they would have done different. Ask them. And if they could not, then we must shun the world we live in to think when one man owns the conscience of many men. The prospect before us is the world of Andersonville. And the jailer concerned only to execute the orders of his commanders, feed of the conscience, fearing only to the authority you to which it has surrendered its soul. Why did the jailer not commit murder then? I did not commit murder. You did not kill William Stewart? Ah, that was all William Stewart. Would you never in fury create enough fury to raise the, raise the power of your, unarmed, your arms? As the doctor say, my arms were wounded in battle. To whom do you say that? You and I have been in battlefield. You have seen men walking with their bubbles in their hand, with broken legs, still moving forward. You raised those arms. No. Yes, you did. You did. When he went out to hunt them in the dog pack, he caught them and he raised those to dead arms. No, he did. Then how? Then how did you ride that hard mounted horse? And he rode to the left and to the right and he put his head down. He blew it up! He blew it up! He blew it up! He blew Yes. I I raised my arms sometimes. But there was no I did not kill any billion steward because there was no He will leave you to the God. But you knew to obey all those killing them. I had to obey. You knew, even though you knew killing, obeying orders was killing them too. Disobey was to save them. Even though, simply, I could not disobey. I did my duty as I saw it. I had made that clear. You badger me. Which, however, they I explained it. It did not do for you. You badger me. You badger me. I explained. And I made it clear that I had to keep order there. To keep the record monthly of the number of prisoners, including those escaping, to report that to General Vinder in the War Department. And you, Patrick, this has been made clear, and you will not let go! To prevent them from escaping, to report in writings and attempted escapes, that was my responsibility. Isn't that clear? Even though I even though I had not enough men, that did not excuse me. So I felt that job overwhelming. Isn't that clear? And you badgered me. It was overwhelming. And I, I 
and find ways and means to block those escape attempts. That was my duty, it was solely on my head. So it went. I preventing, they try. I preventing, they try. And no move to stop them, completely successful. Nothing, nothing can stop them. And that responsibility is solely mine. The deadline, that did not prevent them. Cannon mounted on the wall, that did not prevent them. They kept trying. Tunneling under the walls, digging, burrowing, burrowing, not burrowing. Crushed by the weight of the wall timbers when they made the mistake to burrow directly under those wall timbers, under those logs. And the others continuing, continuing, dragged out by the dogs and continuing again. I have to anticipate finding their tunnels, learning their tricks. They trying, I'm preventing. They trying, I'm preventing. They, they bribing the, the guards with greenbacks, blacking their faces. To pass his nails! To bring the dead bodies off the stockade. And I charge to block those attempts, but nothing prevents them to try. That burning at night. I'm awake. I don't need to see them to know what they are doing. Burning at night. Digging. Digging in that hopeless effort to escape. Digging. Crawling like rats! You must be die! You want me to have no compassion about rats? Yes! Uh, I, I meant rats, so to speak. You are playing a cheap lawyer's trick on me. Cheap lawyer's trick. They will not rats to you. They will no longer men. You cancel them as like men. They will less than men to you. <coughs> they will die and one did not have to suffer, did he? that you have no feelings left. Why do you try to kill yourself in that cell? It's because you have no human feelings left or you cannot end your feeling nothing. <clears throat> Highly about, about your children. Is it because you've already asked them the question? Should I have obeyed orders? Should I have given those men a drink of water? You heard their answers. Yes. Yes, you wish to die. It's the worst. It's the worst. May I ask you for one last time? Why? Why? Not because of fear of dismissal of in court martial. Inside yourself, why couldn't you disobey? Simply, I could not. I did not have that feeling in myself to be able to. I did not have that feeling of strength to do that. I could not disobey. Government rests. See.